Before we get into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Seto Kaiba's bank account, one of my subscribers who uh, donated to me on my car accident video. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you go and watch it. It explains why my upload schedule has been a bit crazy and why things have been just a bit crazy as of late. Um, Seto Kaiba's bank account, want to give you a huge shout out. Thank you so much for that donation. Words can't describe how thankful I am. I tried to you know, make that clear in my reply comment, but I still want to give you a shout out. Anyone that's willing to donate to someone like me, I'm, I'm forever grateful for. Um, so just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting my car back by tomorrow while I record this on a Sunday. It's like a $500 deductible. So every little bit helps, you know, obviously take care of yourself and your loved ones first, but I want to give a thank you. A uh, huge, massive thank you to all of you who choose to support the channel, even just watching the videos. Thank you to my subscriber, Seto Kaiba's bank account, for donating. Let's dive into today's video with a really idiotic argument that I've heard, because uh, this is hilarious. Do I sound better? I like to think I sound better. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AfriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo staying off of that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder. I appreciate each and every one of you for your support, especially if you decide to donate to the channel. I mean, just thank you. Thank you, thank you. It really means the world to me. So I wanna talk about this really idiotic argument now that I'm feeling better and I'm not as sick that People apparently at the North American World Championship were, I don't know if they were talking about Nibiru or if this was just like the general consensus among players there, but they were making the argument that Nibiru is for bad players, which to me is like, what? Like Nibiru is good if you don't respect it, bro. So let me kind of back up and tell this story a little bit because I want to get the community's consensus on this. And of course you, my lovely subscriber. Um... The thing is, is that I was watching this deck profile from somebody, and I forget their their name, but they pay, post fairly regularly on YouTube. They played a uh, Scareclaw Kashtira at Nationals, and they were talking about in their side deck, they were side decking three Nibiru. He goes, everybody that I was talking to at the event said, you shouldn't be playing Nibiru. Nibiru is for bad players. Well, I guess I'm a bad player. And I'm thinking like, what do you mean that Nibiru is only for bad players? Like, there's, there's two sides of this, right? A that Nibiru is only played by bad players because they feel like that they can't crack boards, so they need Nibiru to do so. At the same time, there's also number B, which is it, only bad players fall into the trap of Nibiru, so it's pointless to play Nibiru. And to me, this is like, this argument is so idiotic. Like, it's so ass backwards that it's hilarious to me. The reason why that this is stupid is because Nibiru, ever since release has fundamentally changed how we play Yu-Gi-Oh! Very similar to cards like Gore's the Emissary of Darkness, Battle Fader, Mirror Force back in the day. Like these cards actively changed the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! at a fundamental level because it made you re have to retrain yourself how you played your deck, whether it's a combo deck, control deck, whatever. With Gore's, if you were an idiot and attacked with like your biggest attack monster, 1900 or something, then the opponent dropped out of Gores and Tokum in 1900. Now all your monsters were weaker. Whereas if you attack with your weakest ones first, then you could drop out the Gores, the token would be a little bit weaker. And then you had your stronger monsters to either run over the token or the Gores. That's just like how the game was played for a while when battle traps were actually a thing that I would argue kind of died off in 2017. At least that was the last time when I actually played Mirror Force cards, which is in my Trickstar deck that I came in 18th place with. Shameless plug, but that was like four years ago in 2017. Tears Zero Zodiac format at the beginning of the Link era with Code of the Duelist. But saying that Nibiru is for bad players makes no sense to me. And I feel like that a lot of players, maybe this is just like a conspiracy theorist to me, but I feel like players say this because it's like a 4D chess game where it's like, okay, if enough players say that Nibiru is for bad players, then players will inherently stop playing Nibiru because they don't want to be identified as quote, a bad player. And so then it, by doing so, then all these players that want to play combo decks can combo off and not have to worry about Nibiru. And to me, it's like, how how smooth brain do you have to be to say that Nibiru's for bad players? Like, and I'm not trying to be mean to people who like genuinely think that it's for bad players. The reason why I'm being so harsh about this, one, because I'm trying to be comedic, two, because I feel like the majority of players who say that Nibiru is for bad players, 
are the same players who think they are, like, God's gift on this green earth to this game. Like, it's made for, like, what, six or seven years old and up, and they think that they're just, like, the hottest shit in the room, and, like, they think that they can just clap anyone's cheeks if they're playing the best deck. Like, uh, to me, people like that piss me off in this game. Like, I cannot tell you... Uh, so, I... Let, let me kind of back up here. Let, let me retrain my thoughts here. I've been playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! since 2008 in Jacksonville, Florida. There have been several players throughout the years here in the Jacksonville community that think that their uh, sphere mode testicle balls don't stink like everybody else's and they think that they're the best shit in the room. And I have run into so many players, uh, honestly, like in Florida in general, who think this way. And there's one player in particular who doesn't play anymore, but just thought that he had the biggest cock in the room. And he was, I look back on it now, he was actually a scrub. I don't know, well, I know why I always lost to him because I would always get nervous playing against him. And he was actually like just kind of a bully. Like, uh, allegedly, like back in the day, he told this kid that he sucked at Yu-Gi-Oh and that he was a homophobic slur. And then the kid went home crying to his parents and then never went back to the card shop. Allegedly. So I don't know how true that is, but that goes to show like some of the attitudes of people in this game that they have like, towards other players. And like, I'm not trying to paint like any of the pro players in bad lights. And I'm not saying like that this is, you know, every player that you're going to meet, but there are players out there who just want to be shit stains in the community. And so I feel like the majority of people who are saying Nibiru's for bad players are those exact players because Nibiru is a good card. Like, don't let people tell you different. Like, uh, depending on the format, you can make the argument that Nibiru is not as good, or you should be playing sphere mode instead, because if majority of the decks in the room are just vomiting on the board to where sphere mode is live, then sphere mode is good in that regard. But to say that Nibiru is for bad players is just hilarious to me, because it's like, I can guarantee to you that those same players be like, oh, Nibiru's for bad players, and then they pop off, they don't respect the Nibiru, and then you Nibiru them, and they're just like, I mean, you just, you just had the out and they're just scooping up their cards. Just like, you just had the out. You just had the out. Like, yeah, I'm going to shuffle my deck. We're going to go to the next game and I'm going to whoop your ass. And then you 2-0 them. And they're like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing in this game. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's, it's hilarious to me. It is so damn hilarious. And if, if you think that like Nibiru is not good right now, I have to ask you why. Because in a lot of meta decks, right? They're going to have an out to the Nibiru, whether it's the Griffin Rider, the Baron, the Crystal Wing, especially now with Revolution Synchron. But the decks that either, or rather the players, that don't suspect Nibiru or aren't expecting Nibiru like in the main or the side, or whatever the case may be, it can still throw people off. <coughs> Excuse me. I can't tell you how many times where like even playing purely Sprite... I've broken my opponent's board going second, and then I try to end on a Zeus, and I go downward, and then as soon as I drop downward, I drop out Zeus, and then my opponent goes Nibiru, and I'm just like, I didn't think the one card in your hand was Nib, but like I've said before, I have dog water luck in this game, so if anyone is going to pull the Nib out of their ass, it's going to be when you play against me. You could go into a nine-round regional. You could be playing a 60-card deck and play one copy of Nibiru. You will see that Nibiru every time you play against me because that's my dog water luck. Similar to how Robbie Cole was saying in one of his videos the other day that he's like, yeah, back in the day, people would always top deck Miracle Fusion on me. Yeah, at that that's how I am with Nibiru. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like, it's... <laughs> excuse me it's just ridiculous so and it's not just nabiru that people make this argument for i mean i've seen it in the past with like uh, years ago when like old board breakers like raigeki and dark hole were a thing people be like oh well if you got to play dark hole you're bad oh well if you got to play raigeki you're bad oh if you know I, I remember someone back in the day was like oh if you can't afford x card then you're just bad and i'm like the card was like, let's say it was like a $60 card. I think it's like what it was. I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the card was, but it was some sort of like expensive ass card at the time years ago. I remember the player saying, if you can't afford this card, it's just because you're bad. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have a part-time job because I was too young to work at the time. Like smooth brain idiot. Like good God, like go touch grass. Like seriously, to, to me, it's like in the grand scheme of things, it's like, if the format doesn't call for Nibiru or if Nibiru is not optimal to play, then yes, you should be playing something else, whether it's a Kaiju, Santa Claus, Lava, you name it, or Dark Ruler no more. <coughs> but if Nibiru is a solid pick of a card, 
don't be the jackass who's like, oh, if you're playing Nibiru, that's for bad players. And, oh, you're a bad player if you play Nibiru. It's like, okay, what should I play instead, Sugar Boo Bear? Oh, I should just shut up and play Cash Tira. Well, then everybody's going to know how to beat my deck. So I'm going to go off the beaten path, you twit. Like, it, it's hilarious to me because it's like these same players, you could drop Nibiru on or drop the Dark Hole on and they just shit their pants because they don't know how to how to handle it, you know? Or like you're playing something that like not many other decks are playing, like how I was playing Ghost Bell at that Boca Raton Regional and my opponent went Sanctifier Effect, get out two monsters and I went Ghost Bell and his brain just 404 errored at blue screen like we're in Windows 98 and he didn't know how to deal with that because he's like, I didn't test for this uh, this interaction. Like I could just tell, like he was so confused because he probably didn't run into Ghost Bell all damn day. And guess what? Your boy had the Ghost Bell. I was only playing two copies, but you know, it worked out. So guys, let me know down in the comments below. Are there other cards that like you've heard in your like local community who are like, oh, if you played this card, you're bad. Like it makes no sense to me, especially for something like Nibiru. When Nibiru is such inherently an impactful card that you inherently have to play your deck differently and make sure that you don't go over that five summon amount because if you do, you're going to get punished for it with a Nibiru. Obviously, there's the situations where like if you know the opponent's hand because you use talents or if they don't have a hand or if like all three of their Nibirus are in the graveyard or something or they're banished from like a Desires, then yeah, you can kind of risk it for the biscuit in that regard. Or <clears throat> if you know that you can set up a board where if you know you set it up, you win, then yeah, like there's, there's those little idiosyncrasies but in general to say like nibiru's for bad players i think it's just a really garbage take like i feel like nibiru will always be a good card like it's it's the new age gores like honestly so if you got a good laugh let me know down in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next video